It is time for Dr. Judy Workman and Food for Mood. Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, serotoninpowerdiet.com. Also, Simon loses his tummy. Ladies and gentlemen, live, Judy Workman. Good morning, Judy. <laughs> I, I better be alive. <laughs> you think? Live on the radio. <laughs> it would be very strange if I were not. If only it is a hologram from behind the curtain, Dr. Judy Wortman. <laughs> That's right. All right. Anyway, so, I, I, I think one of the things I want to talk about today is about is strange. It is. It's, because, it's absolutely bizarre. I, I'm reading your blog posting, and uh, good luck with this. Well... I, it, it all started with my flipping through a magazine while waiting for my now late, you know, <laughs> hairdresser. I always start with my hairdresser. I don't go that often, but it was the same same um, time when I, as I spoke last week. Anyway, she was late, and I'm flipping through this magazine, and I see an article about uh, one of the staff writers of this magazine, I think it's Vogue or something, going to a dermatologist slash psychiatrist to get Botox for her chronic depression, and I'm thinking, no, 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 you know, I, I, I must be delusional. Um, but I read the article, and it turns out that she had read someplace that injections of this um, really deadly bacteria that has been uh, reduced to very tiny amounts so that you don't die when you have this, this injection, um, had been suggested to her to help her depression, and, and indeed, after several... Uh, administrations of, 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 of this injection, I'll go into details in a minute, she really did feel slightly better. So I thought, well, I'm going to go find out whether this is really true or just another magazine, oh, gee, look at this new scientific breakthrough kind of article with absolutely no evidence behind it. And I started looking at research articles, and lo and behold, there are several, actually many studies now, many being maybe a, an inaccurate term, perhaps maybe 25 studies or so, showing that for people who are what's called treatment-resistant, which means that they have not been able to have their depression lifted by antidepressants and or talk therapy, um, even some electrical stimulation, it's been suggested to them that they get injections of something called Botox. And for those of, those, those of you who are not familiar with it, Botox is a... a Sort of botulism. A, a tiny amount of something called botuline, botulinus, botulinin, which is a bacteria, a bacteria that causes, that excretes a toxin that if you ingest it, causes this horrible disease called botulism. And the reason it's a horrible disease is it causes muscle paralysis. So you die. You know, you, I mean, you, you can't even breathe. You die. Okay. But many years ago now, it was dis- discovered that if you took tiny, tiny, minuscule amounts of this and injected it into muscle under the skin, what it does is, I mean, it sounds awful, but what it does is paralyze the muscles. When it paralyzes the muscles, they don't contract. When they don't contract, it means that the skin above the muscle relaxes and voila. The lines that are sort of made into furrow, especially the frown lines above your eyebrows, um, on your forehead, tend to relax and the lines may not go away entirely, but they diminish. And it was just, and, and it was used first, I guess, by you know celebrities and actresses and what have you. And then it's been used not only to reduce wrinkles, but also it's found that it's been very helpful for migraines. It's been helpful for some kinds of muscle spasms in the hands. I think that pianists or violinists have actually used it because, again, what it does is relax the muscles that may be permanently contracted in something like, oh, you know, a, a hand problem, and it allows it to relax in the hand to regain its mobility. Okay, so for reasons that, Jill, I have no idea why, <laughs> how, where the person came across this idea, but it was thought, well, if we remove the frown lines, you know, those vertical lines, above, you know, above your eyebrows that make you look like you're in perpetually bad mood, if you remove those frown lines, maybe people will feel better because... They will see other people responding to them positively. Wow, look how happy that person looks, that onlooker might say. And you think, oh, I'm really depressed, but I guess I really must not be depressed because somebody thinks I look happy. Who knows? But anyway, it was found that if they did give people who have depressed depression or, or anxiety, or, you know, uh, this, this kind of injection, the Botox injection, removed the frown lines that a significant 
reduction in the, the symptoms of depression apparently occurred. And, uh, and, and what sort of was more evidence for it is that when the Botox wears off, which it does in about three to three or four months, and the frown lines came back, the depression came back. So maybe there was a relationship. But then it turns out that it, it's not apparently removing the frown lines per se, like paralyzing those muscles temporarily per se, that helps the depression. Because some people who never really did have frown lines but still had injections and were depressed got better. And there are other people, believe it or not, who really liked having a frown lines. And they said, I don't really like having my frown lines removed. And they still got better. <laughs> Strange. Um, and so there is a couple of papers that show that it's not just injecting this Botox into your muscle and the, the frown lines disappear, but apparently there are nerves, obviously, in your, in your forehead, that, in your face, actually, that carry impulses into your brain and carry impulses to one of the emotion centers in your brain, something called the amygdala, where you have emotions like rage, you know, you know anger and anxiety, and these Im- nervous impulses, apparently, uh, you know, from the Botox, starting with the Botox, decrease your emotional responsiveness to whatever, and it and makes you feel calmer and presumably less depressed. That's the story. Weird? I don't know. Uh, I th- 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 you know what? Here's here's the here here's kind of the crack up. I just realized in listening to you how. Um, essentially Jurassic I am because I have always had filed away the downside. I mean, as a kid, how could you not be enwrapped by the notion of botulinus? Especially if you had, <laughs> right? And especially if you read Peanuts, you That's know, right. L- Lucy and Linus and Charlie Brown, of course, and Snoopy. So anyway, uh, so when you start pursuing, even as a kid, botulism, now, we are so past that. We are in the land of images, the land of Instagram. It's like, oh, Botox all the time. We People don't, you know, they're happy to slice and dice their appearances. But when you get right back to what Botox is and what it's made out of and why you only need a teeny yeah. amount, that almost distracts you. You know, if you just spent your time on that, you could probably ignore this entire, does it work, does it not work? What's the difference? If people think it works, voila. You know, it, but scientifically speaking, ee. Yeah. No, I'm not just... talking about for line removal. I'm talking about, you know, you can, I've always been astounded at the placebo effect. Yeah. No, you're right about that. Of course you're right about that. I mean, I, I think that um, I, I, there are instances where, again, it's, it's not used to remove wrinkles, but, um, you know, I, I don't know for people who suffer from migraines whether it really maybe has been shown, to, it has been shown to be effective enough so that insurance companies will pay for you to have Botox injections for migraines. And then they're not, not without pain. I mean, because, you know, injecting into the forehead can be painful, so it's not something would, somebody would necessarily choose to undergo. And there have been cases where there have been like pianists or violinists who have such contraction of their fingers that they have not been able to perform, and, and the Botox really does relax it, because I said it does paralyze the muscles. So in that situation, you are getting the physiological effects, but injection into your forehead, and you're right, being told it might affect your depression, you're right. Who cares? If you feel better, it's worth anything, isn't it? It's priceless. It's Absolutely. Really- and it doesn't, uh, obviously, don't take this the wrong way, anyone who's listening, but it, it, it doesn't matter if it works, if it works and exactly. if you feel better, that's the most important thing. Exactly. And, you know, maybe, maybe research go in more deeply into how we can have you know, non-harmful, quote, placebo treatments to affect people, you know, it, positively, um, because that, that is the bottom line. You know, are you going to feel better? And what was interesting was that the people who were tested on this were people who really were at the end of the rope. I mean, they, they, they just did not respond to conventional treatments, you know, the, all the antidepressants, and even, again, some of this electrostimulation. And for example, I, I have to tell you, Jill, I have a friend who has a, a relative 
um, from from marriage, from a second marriage, who has chronic depression to the point where she's in bed in a dark room three weeks out of every four. Uh, she cycles into this depression, and I sent this article, one article to her, and I said, "Look, you might suggest it because this woman had gone through ab- I mean, the, the patient, ab- everything that is now being used, you know, in, in departments of psychiatry." That maybe this will help. Mm-hmm. So you're absolutely right. Who cares whether how it works if it works? If, if I, that's all important. And I, I, <clears throat> another opinion, non-scientific opinion on your scientific show. Um, is I, I, I think that the booming uh, marijuana industry uh, might have um, uh, right. you, I, I'm talking to I, I'm speaking to the placebo effect. If, if people feel that they are going to be helped by something, then you know yeah I mean, but, but I think the, the one thing that may show that it's not really only a placebo effect is that it, when it wears off, um, again, the symptoms come back, and you, the patient, don't know when it's going to wear off. I mean, it, it, because it's not, it, it starts wearing off before you know, the lines start right. Right. appearing, because it's very gradual. Um, and yet, you know, they, they have found, scientists have found, that the symptoms do appear. And when it's, re, when it's given again, of course, that might be a placebo effect. Who knows? You know, the symptoms go away. I mean, one of the issues really is who do you go to? I mean, do you go to your psychiatrist, who certainly won't know how to give Botox? Do you go to your dermatologist, who certainly aren't dealing with your chronic, you know, unrelenting depression? I mean, I, I know it's a new specialty. I know it's a rhetorical question, but you start with, and this is why it's really important to have a squad and someone who does oversight, essentially, yeah, who does overview. Yeah. But you start with your you start you start with the person who is most open to dealing with the problem. You start with your physician, and you ask your physician for advice. I mean, when I used, uh, my physician recommended the HDB, but you have that, a cool that, that, that oil. Um, it took a he, while to get you a cool physician. Yeah, but he also told me don't buy it from your research it and find it. And there is a guy in town, Sergio, uh, uh, who operates it. He he has a. Uh, he has a he sells the, the the proper type. There's a lot of right. stuff out there that's not proper. But Botox, I don't understand anybody putting anything under their skin. Well, that's because you that's, grew up during that, botulism that, that's, time. That, that, that's that that's that's that dangerous. I just don't so understand. you 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 would be one of the rare few that uh, you know had to be carted off because of a Botox <laughs> treatment. Well, you you have to go to somebody reputable. I mean, there are people who feel they can give an injection like a Novocaine, like a dentist. You know, they can give Botox. I've, I've seen it. You know, don, dental's office is advertising Botox. You know, it, it's like anything else where people think, oh, I can do this specialty, therefore I can do that specialty. And it really have, you really have to have people who you know, are board-certified dermatologists or plastic surgeons who know how to handle this, know how much to give. And, again, it's a question of dose also. I mean, you, you know, one of the things that I, I, I thought of, both of you, thought of saying is that, look, if you give Botox to your, you know, your mouth region, I don't know why anybody would, you can't smile. So you might take away the frowns, but what if you can't smile? Would that mean that the depression would come back again? There's lots of people. No, of course not, because, again, it's something that happens in the brain. But but I'm not sure that simply removing... Uh, Your ability is, 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 is really the solution. To, even right. on its impact on the brain, is really going to have a permanent effect on whatever underlying cause there is for depression. There's lots but of people... But it's simply an interesting, I don't know, sort of a new age kind of... Intervention. Who knows what the next thing is going to be? There's lots of people that love to give me Botox in the mouth. I tell you, <laughs> this is shut you. Thank you very much, Doctor Judy. Oh, okay. Food for mood. Of course, you can hear Judy. Uh, of course, every Thursday morning here on Robin Hood Radio, and also rebroadcast on the weekends.